Hello everybody, this is Catholic Dad, episode number 441, Confessional and Idealists. I've been doing some meditating on this. I've been thinking really hard about this. So I've talked before about idealism and realism, and uh, people tend to fall into one camp or the other, and then there's a mishmash in between. Uh, I'm going to confess to you that I'm a hardened realist. Like, the, the world does, never surprises me, not one bit. doesn't matter who it is or what happens, how difficult it is. Yeah, that's the way the world is, and I'm not going to try to change it. I'm just going to go and do my best for myself. I mean, do my, bet, my best with myself to make the world a better place. Um, and things aren't going to knock me over. I'm not going to feel hardship seeing sick puppy dogs in the street or homeless people and stuff like that. No, well, we have to force forward work, do our job, and try to make it so society is better so the, the, those sufferings don't exist. But I don't feel heartbreak very often. And um, uh, yeah, the, the world's a hard, nasty place. I get it. Um, and that's realism. And so the opposite of realism would be idealism. And uh, the people, these idealists, think the world can be perfected, or at least they feel it deep in their hearts. They may um, uh, intellectually know that the world can't be perfected, but in their hearts they desire perfection and desire healing throughout the world where nobody suffers and nobody, and if you think about it in a political spectrum, these are your, um, these are your bleeding heart liberals, right? They're the ones that like want to do everything for everybody all the time and they just want to make sure that puppy dogs are never sick in the streets, that there's no homeless people, that, you know, everybody's well fed and everybody has enough and fair enough, that makes sense, right? I mean, um, like, that's compassion and the world needs that, right? But the problem is idealists are not very realistic, meaning they're not gonna solve the world's problems. And sometimes they impart programs that destroy the greater society at large. Think about Karl Marx, he was a pentultimate idealist, right? Or um, any kind of great artist, you know, is an idealist. And they wanna do all sorts of things for the world. And sometimes they create bigger problems than they would have in the first place. Lenin being an idealist, Mao Zedong being an idealist. So idealism can completely go off the rails. You know, like you trying to create the utopia on the planet could actually make it so you create hell on earth and not even realize that you're the one that did it. So you have to keep your idealism in check, much like your cold rash uh, realism you have to keep in check too. Like if somebody's bleeding in front of you, you actually have to assist them, right? You can't just like, oh, they're bleeding, they're gonna die. You can't do that, right? And so, but so I was thinking about the confessional and idealism because in my mind, uh, I think most priests are idealistic, meaning when they hear about the woes of the world, the sins of people in the world, that uh, it hurts them. It actually hurts their heart to know that the world is a mean and nasty place like that. And that sometimes, you know, in medicine, sometimes I feel like I'm not doing a heck of a lot of good. Like, I am sure priests feel that too. They go into the confessional and the same sins day in and day out, same people doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And it must hurt their heart. Like, what am I doing? Like, why am I here? The world is so imperfect and it just, it pains me. And so I was actually thinking about this, like, I'm so realistic, I think idealists are useless. Like, I, I think we should just get rid of them and make everybody a realist and the world would be a better place. But that's probably not true. And so I wanna go into the, uh, why most priests are idealists. And let me confess, first off, I've been a priest, a priest in particular, uh, that was a little bit of a realist. And you know, I, I, I confess my sins and he's like, ah, that's no big deal. Just go on, move on, everybody does that. That's no, yeah, just go live your life, you're fine. And I can tell you what, that's not psychologically healing for me, right? Because I go there thinking I have a problem. And then the priest says, you don't have a problem. That's like going to a psychologist and then uh, telling the psychologist, I have this problem. And then, and then the, the psychologist says, yeah, that's not a problem. No big deal. Go home. Like, then you go home and you still feel like you get the problem and nobody helped you. And, and that's the thing about the confession. It's like actually thinking about it, that you actually take your sins, the things that you feel guilty for, the bad things in your life that you want to change about yourself, right? This is like the perfect psychology. And you go hand them over to somebody else, a priest for that matter, right? Um, they go hand them over to a priest for that matter. And then the priest takes those sins on himself, essentially. And if he's a realist, he'll be like, hey, it doesn't matter. Whatever, doesn't matter, you're forgiven, go. And it doesn't heal anybody. But if that priest feels the pain of your, your sins, right? Your pain of your sins, then, um, here, sorry. Um, that's the healing process, right? Taking on the sins of the world. That's the Christ story. That's exactly what he did. Christ went through suffering, took the sins of the world on so the world could be forgiven. That's why priests need to be idealists. And this is what I'm thinking about. Um, pre idealists do serve a great purpose. It's literally, they are the, the sinkhole and the foundation of the sins of the world, much like Christ was. And that you take them away, you make them go away, and that's how you reform your, 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 uh, your, your parishioner. 
the, the person that comes to you looking for change in their lives, you take the pain on your idealistic heart. And that's the same, like, not the exact same, but it's an analogy. That's the same pain Christ took on the cross, the crucifixion, the scourging, that the sins of the world brought him there. And then that pain was the only way to open the gates of hell for eternal salvation. And so, you know, Protestants make fun of Catholics all the time because they have to go confess to somebody. Well, I can tell you what, if you ever talk to a Catholic priest, any one of you, almost all of them are idealistic to the nth degree. And when they hear about the, the, the horrors of the world, they, they actually have pain in their hearts. And when you go to them again and again and again, they actually feel the suffering that you're saying to them. And that, and then they say you're forgiven. They take the suffering on and you give it to them. Now, what a great, what a great gift, what a great grace. But that's why you got to pray for your priests, by the way, because uh, they, they carry the, the, the sins of the world on their own shoulders and they get rid of them for you. And so um, that's just a thought I had. I, I mean, it may be totally off base, but think about that, everybody, for a little bit um, and um, appreciate your priests more. Uh, don't kick them around. Don't kick them in the teeth. Stop criticizing them. That's always a bad thing to do, too. Um, and pray for them and realize uh, the, the responsibility they have toward the eternal salvation of their entire diocese. That's, I mean, their, their parish community. They're the ones responsible for the salvation of souls. So they have to tell you hard, difficult things. And when you come to them with your sins, they have to feel the pain, the pain for the redemption of souls, like the cru crucifixion of Christ. And... I've heard it said before, and I think uh, probably other people have too, in persona Christi, in the person of Christ, the priest is actually there acting as the Christ figure for the parish community. That's his church, okay? So uh, respect your priests, everybody. Well, anyway, this is Catholic Dad making you think about it. Please like or subscribe, get the Mass and pray the daily rosary. And oh, one more thing. I don't know if I said this or if I thought it, but if I were a priest, it would be terrible because I'd be in the confessional and they'd say, Oh, yeah, I, you know, I kicked my dog. I yelled at my kids. I'm like, yeah, kids are a pain in the ass, you know. I get it. Um, no big deal. Not a big deal. Just go, you know, don't do it again. Like, that's not healing at all. The person comes to you. And I think that's why priests have to be idealistic and they can't be realists. Which is also, by the way, why priests probably should be celibate. Is because if you take that idealistic person and you throw them in the, uh, the realism of family, the mud and the uh, anger and the uh, stress and the, you know, like the dirty diapers and the crying in the middle of the night and the puking child and you na name it, you throw them in the chaos of family, you will convert them into a realist. That's how it works. And so if you, if you have a, a parishioner that's also a, a father of a large family, he's going to break down into a realist and he's not going to be sympathetic for the sins of the world anymore. He's not going to be able to take those on his shoulder with pain and suffering. And so I think that's why the church has one of the reasons why uh, priests hold a, a celibate vow. Well, anyway, okay, that's all I have to say. I could be off base, but uh, just think about it and comment if you like. God bless you all. Take care.